spot. I am an arrow in the bow of my God. You see? And Obiereka wonders if that arrow rebounds. What happens? Is it possible that a priest like um, Ezulu can cause a priest, it can cause an oracle to ruin itself? Or that a, an oracle like Ulu can cause a priest to ruin himself? All these paradoxes of situation and life, they appear one way or another uh, in in the life of uh, Arrow of God. A Man of the People was published in 1966, a bleak satire set in an unnamed African state which has just attained independence. The novel follows a minister of culture named Nanga, as the protagonist is seduced by corruption and the satisfaction of his personal desires, the nation around him falls victim to a military coup. Upon reading an advanced copy of the novel, Achebe's friend John Pepe Clark declared, and I quote, Chinua, I know you are a prophet. Everything in this book has happened except a military coup, unquote. Soon afterward, Nigerian Major Chukuma Kaduna Nziago seized control of the northern region of the country as part of a larger coup attempt. The ending of Achebe's novel had brought him to the attention of military personnel who suspected him of having foreknowledge of the queue. When he received word of the pursuit, he sent his wife, who was pregnant, and children on a squalid boat through a series of unseen creeks to the Igbo stronghold of Port Harcourt. They arrived safely, but Christie suffered a miscarriage at the journey's end. Chinua rejoined them soon afterwards in Ogidi. Some soldiers went to my office and said they wanted this man, Achebe, um, we hear his pen is very strong. We want to compare it with our guns. Yeah. How do you and the reason is that I wrote a book uh, which ended with a military coup for the first time in Nigeria. And two days after the book was published in London, there was a military coup in Nigeria. Well, it was just a coincidence. Yes, of course. But people thought that you may have been in, involved I in some way. I was the organizer of the coup. And there was no point telling them that uh, a novel takes about two years to write. <laughs> Therefore, if I was planning a coup, I wouldn't write a novel. Uh, that wouldn't be my, my procedure. Uh, but um, those fellows were not uh, the kind of people you would make jokes with. Yeah. Yeah, so the first thing, the best thing is to take your children, uh, two children then, and, and run away. Once the family had resettled in Enugu, Achebe and his friend Christopher Kibo started a publishing house called Citadel Press to improve the quality and increase the quantity of literature available to young readers. In May 1967, the southeast region of Nigeria broke away to form the Republic of Biafra. Confident of their readiness. I think that when it does come, so the people on the other side would be surprised as to what they're going to get. In July, the Nigerian military attacked to suppress what it considered an unlawful rebellion. Achebe's partner, Christopher Okibo, who had become a close friend of the family, especially of Achebe's son, young Ike Chuku, volunteered to join the secessionist army while simultaneously working at the press. Achebe's house was bombed one afternoon. Christie had taken the children to visit her sick mother, so the only victims were his books and papers. The Achebe family narrowly escaped disaster several times during the war. Five days later, Christopher Okibo was killed on the war's front line. Achebe was shaken considerably by the laws.
In 1971, he wrote Ditch for Kibo, originally in the Igbo language, but later translated to English. What I will do, what I'd like to do, is to read you a poem I wrote to, uh, to Christopher Kibo. This is an English translation of a poem I wrote in the Igbo language. The man who translated my poem from Igbo into English happily is here today. And uh, so it's with your permission <laughs> that I that I want to um, read this your rendition of my poem, <laughs> the English version. Uh, the above the original version is called Unong Okibo, uh, which means. A wake for Kibo. For whom are we searching? For whom are we searching? For Kibo, we are searching. Mzamalizo. Has he gone for firewood? Let him return. Has he gone to fetch water? Let him return. Has he gone to the marketplace? Let him return. For Kibo, we are searching. Zomalizo. For whom are we searching? For whom are we searching? For Kibo, we are searching. Zomalizo. Has he gone to the market? Then keep from him you tumult of the marketplace. It is Okibo. I'm calling. Zomalizo. Thank you very much. In September 1968, the city of Aba fell to the Nigerian military and Achebe once again moved his family, this time to Omwahia, where the Biafran government had also relocated. He was choosing to chair the newly formed National Guidance Committee, charged with the task of drafting principles and ideas for the post-war era. In 1969, the group completed a document entitled The Principles of the Biafran Revolution, later released as the Ahiara Declaration. The beginning of 1970 saw the end of the state of Biafra. On 12th January, the military surrendered to Nigeria and Achebe returned with his family to Ogidi, where their home had been destroyed. He took a job at the University of Nigeria, becoming a faculty member of the Faculty of Arts, University of Nigeria. In the early 1970s, he also became a research fellow of the Institute of African Studies, University of Nigeria, Nsuka. Join us as we try to locate the door to Achebe's office in the Institute of African Studies, University of Nigeria, Nsuka. Okay, so just follow me and see the very good professor of arts, Professor Chino Achebe, used to stay. Oh, okay, my bad. <laughs> For some reason it's locked, but this is where Professor Chinu Achebe used to stay when he was here. So that's it. Thank you. Achebe helped start two magazines. The Literary Journal of Okike, a forum for African art, fiction, poetry, and Osuka School, an internal publication of the university with the motto, devastating, fearless, brutal, and true. 
Achebe and the Okike Committee, especially Professor OCN, where later established another cultural magazine, Owandibo, to showcase the indigenous stories and oral traditions of the Igbo community. And we actually pioneered the editorship of Okike for almost 30 years. More than 25 years precisely. By 2006, Chino Achebe appointed him the editor emeritus of Okike, an African journal of male writing, a foremost literary journal in Africa, founded precisely in 1971. Okike is everywhere in the world. If you go to the internet, you find Okike. In fact, my first list in, in international biography on African literature was an article I produced on Aerobius Hangman also Dian Wicked, which was published in Okike in 2000. In 2000. It was called Esweer by a white man and placed it on African International Biography on African Literature. So OC and the and um, and um, Chino Achebe had rewarding friendship. The University of Massachusetts Amherst offered Achebe a professorship and the family moved to the United States. Achebe presented a Chancellor's lecture at Amherst on 18 February 1975 titled An Image of Africa, Racism in Conrad's Heart of Darkness, decrying Joseph Conrad as, and I quote, a thorough racist, unquote. Achebe asserts that Conrad's famous novel dehumanizes Africans, rendering Africa as, and I quote, a metaphysical battlefield devoid of all recognizable humanity into which the wandering European enters at his peril, unquote. The lecture caused a storm of controversy, even at the reception immediately following his talk. He doesn't make any force on anybody or on anything. But he wants his fellow human beings to understand his own dimension, his own dimension in terms of perceiving things, whether political, social, uh, economic, you know, he very much would like to air out his own views without necessarily destroying any other person's uh, views. So when I say he's a very deep person, this is part of it. Uh, he doesn't make noise, like many of his type, who would like to really be heard in everything, especially in politics. Mm -hmm. But whenever he talks, he talks sense. Uh, very much concerned with the future of Nigeria, very, very much. Every aspect of the life of people in Nigeria touches him. And he's very much, you know, touched when people's rights are trampled upon without anybody fighting for it, when people's ways of life are suppressed without anybody making any statement about such things. If you read her, most of his books, you find out that this deep personality I'm talking about can be even seen from um, his writings. So people say he doesn't uh, come out uh, in politics and all that. You see, the fact is that this is somebody who sits and analyzes the life of his people and through his right tries to give out his own perspective of the African condition, the Nigerian condition. But if you read his, uh, uh, The Trouble with Nigeria, very little book, but it's so full of his personal observations of the way we are running this country, of the way we are living, and nobody has ever contradicted his own perception of the way we are living. In fact, if everything he raised 
as problems in this country. Everything is still remaining the way he saw it. So when he doesn't talk much, it, I, I would say that he may be saying, well, I keep on talking, I keep on discussing, I keep on, uh, you know, bringing out my views, but it would appear that those who are in the helm of affairs do not seem to even read those things, do not even seem to understand what he's saying. In October 1979, Achebe was awarded the first ever Nigerian National Merit Award. In 1980, he met James Baldwin at a conference held by the African Literature Association in Gainesville, Florida, United States of America. The writers with similar political perspectives, beliefs about language and faith in the liberating potentials of literature were eager to meet one another. Baldwin said, and I quote, It is very important that we should meet each other finally, if I must say so, after something like 400 years, unquote. I did a comparative study of six novels of Chino Achebe and uh, six novels of uh, uh, another author uh, from uh, Senegal, the female author. Actually, I wanted to do a comparative study of the uh, feminist or womanist uh, uh, the portrayal of the, of the situation of women in, in Africa. Uh, so during that study, I was able to compare his writings with Dr. Aminata Sufa uh, from Senegal, uh, who an, an anglophone uh, uh, author, and the other one a francophone author. And at the end, I felt that China Chebe really is a literary icon. And not only a literary icon, uh, he uh, exemplifies uh, the evil uh, academic prowess. And uh, what um, you may talk of Shakespeare, Shakespeare has done in the English, uh, British uh, English uh, literature. In the African literary uh, scenario, I think Chuna Chibé also is doing some research. So um, I decided then when I was appointed uh, the, uh, the faculty to chairman this 